Hello there. Welcome to uh, Healthy Cooking with Your Friendly Italians. I'm Jim Barrow. And I'm Marilyn Barrow. And Marilyn, we're here. Uh, summer started on Sunday. Isn't it wonderful? Best time of the year. Uh, now we get a chance to eat all the wonderful fresh vegetables and fruits. Right. Have a barbecue, do some grilling, cooking outdoors, having parties al fresco. I mean, and shopping at farmer's market. And shopping at farmer's market. So this is a good season. And we've got some recipes for you. We've got uh, shaved zucchini. She's, he's going to say, what, what's going on here? Well, uh, we've written it as shaved parsley, but it's shaved <laughs> zucchini. But, yeah, but who it, sha- how do you shave a zucchini? Well, I'm going to tell you how we shave a zucchini. <laughs> <clears throat> we also have got a uh, uh, a French onion soup, uh, uh, a special recipe. Special re- recipe for, comes from uh, uh, the local new tavern that has opened the up here. The sequestered tavern, right? Uh, we have crostini, which is this is a form of an appetizer that we're going to put some vegetables and types of things. And from uh, my friend, the mafia Joe Dogs. We've got a cold zabignoni that we're going to serve with strawberries. Strawberries, which is the perfect time of the year to do that. So uh, that's all to come. <clears throat> Before we get into the recipes, I want to talk about uh, one of my favorite wineries, Marilyn, uh, Fox Run Winery, which yes. is over on Seneca Lake. Right. It's, been, it's been here for quite a long time. It's on the west side of the lake. Uh, it's a place that uh, they make excellent wines. Their wines the, are very good, but they're also into a good food, and they're very good right. about pairing their wines with their food. And uh, they have, in the fall of the year, they have this great garlic festival. Yes, they do. And right, uh, right now they have, during the week, they have what they call a food and wine uh, experience, and they're pairing the local foods and wines uh, and a tour of the winery and you get a chance to uh, to eat some of the uh, preparations using local foods and some great wines and uh, and they really do a do a nice job and uh, uh, you should try to uh, call them up you can go Monday through Thursday I think and uh, if you want to go there's a charge involved but it's a great experience, a great winery that you really need to support that has good wines. And they uh, are very, very involved in this community. And, uh, you know, they say spending local uh, really gives and receives local. So think well, about that. Yeah, it's sort of regional, but that's good yep. in our region. And, of course, yep. we're get being known more and more for our wines. And I think we're, we're really edging up on Napa Valley here with uh, with our wineries. Yeah, look out Napa Valley, here right. we come. <laughs> All right, let's go to our uh, our first recipe, which is uh, shaved zucchini. Now, yeah. what are you, what are you gonna say? What What is this guy doing, shaving zucchini? Well, what I'm talking about is slicing zucchini very, very thin. So we, uh, uh, we, we, Jim came on over and we, uh, we did a little, a little demonstration taping and here. on this thing. We're going to show this and we'll show you what shaving zucchini is all about. So uh, uh, I think it'll be interesting to see uh, what we do with zucchini. Zucchini is a great, is a great uh, uh, vegetable. It is. And this is an easy form of doing it. And, and it's certainly we, available. <laughs> it's actually available all year round, but of course in the summer it's even better. Yes, it is. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to use a pesto with it, and we're going to use uh, the pesto pesto that we use for this one is called scape, and people are going to wonder what scape is. And it's really oh. just the root coming up out of a garlic. It's sometimes called ramps also. Yep. That's another name for it. So you, you ready, Jimmy? Okay. Okay. So we're going to show, here we go. I'm cutting the ends off of the uh, of zucchini and try to get the zucchini without blemishes on them. Try to keep them on the small side. And, yeah, because uh, he's going to use a mandolin, so it has to go through the yeah. mandolin easily. So shaving a zucchini means sh- cutting it very thin. Oh, you're and cutting it, not using the mandolin. No, I'm going to I'm going to put it on the mandolin. Just okay. hold on. And but uh, if you haven't got a mandolin. 
uh, you can just cut them, put, put the, your zucchini down flat, use a thin knife and just slice it uh, thin, about an eighth of an inch thick. This is a mandolin and this, this makes it very, very easy. And I slice his. that one piece off the bottom so it's got an even surface to, uh, to, uh, uh, to cut on. And that's, you'll see so how you nice. So you have a guard that does, so that your knuckles. You gotta have a guard. <laughs> that your knuckles don't get I, I shaved I also. I would lose, lose a couple of fingers if I didn't. Uh, so it's a really easy way. It's a nice tool to have around. And the, and the adjustments on there on a, on a mandolin will go from uh, eighth of an inch on up. And uh, so there's different. There's all kinds of price ranges on mandolins, but yeah. this plastic one works very well. Yeah, you can you can get you them can up to go $100, yes hundred and hundred and fifty dollars. I think this one was uh, probably fifteen bucks or thereabouts. Or somewhere between job. fifteen and thirty, somewhere yeah. in that range. So now I've shredded uh, the zucchini, and I've got some boiling salted water. And all I'm going to do is put put the zucchini in a salted water, hot salted water, for about thirty seconds. That's all I want to You're do. You're just blanching it very quickly right and uh, I, I'm gonna I've got some of the of, of this pesto that I'm going to uh, put in with it and this is what we call I use escape s-c-a-p-e and at this time of the year with the garlic root uh, the garlic shooting up there's a center stalk that comes up which is called escape or another you may know it as a ramp a ramp that's and, the other name for it but it's a it's a mild tasting form of garlic basically, it's green, uh, and I'm 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 making a pesto out of some uh, oil and some lemon and uh, and you can put nuts in it if you'd like. But I've, I'm glad that's all been made, and I'm just going to sloop some of that stuff in there. You, and you can uh, use pistachio nuts or almond nuts. I mean. Just again, make this recipe your own. So, in this, you can use almonds, you can use Parmesan cheese, you can use the zest of lemon. Again, do what you want. So we we've got that mix and letting that seep a little bit. Now we're going to serve that on a crostini, and what uh, what it is is I've toasted some garlic. I have. I have not put any oil on this at this time. You You've never toasted the bread. Toasted the bread, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put the oil on there before I toast it, okay, because it becomes too too oily. And on top of that, I've got some skim rigotta. I'm going to uh, put that partially skim rigotta, which I'm going to put over the top of that. And uh, <laughs> and then we'll, we're letting that uh, zucchini, the shaved zucchini, sort of stick. Uh, sit in there in that juices, and uh, we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna do that. So now I'm going to take and brush a little olive oil over the top, just to give it that nice little olive oil flavor over the rigata. And uh, this is a really easy, easy restaurant to do. These are wonderful for appetizers. You could slice them a little bit, or you can serve them if you had a nice soup. And you had a crostini to go with it and make a very fine lunch or a light dinner. Mm -hmm. Nice summer dish. Easy to do. And there I just put them on as best you can. And, uh, you know, it's, it's there a There you go. Restaurant. And on crostini, you can do almost anything you want. If you have some kind of pesto. and We're going to be talking. We're going to be talking about some of the other... <coughs> Christinis uh, of what what type of things you can put on top of, of this of this, uh, and I, I had put on a dinner up at uh, up at Knapp's Winery uh, for the slow cooking uh, group, and I'm now I'm sprinkling a little uh, Parmesan cheese uh, over the top, and uh, uh, we're 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 about done. There it is. There it is. It's a nice dish. I get I'm going over to get my wine. Can't can't finish anything without my wine and uh, salud I hope you enjoy nice dish you should try it look at there another creation what the hell I thought I was doing. <laughs> <laughs>
I think you do. I think you do. Okay. <laughs> so, so there's our first recipe. And uh, this time of the year, you can use, we talk about pesto. You can make pesto out of parsley. You can make it out basil, of... Basil. Basil's the... The, the, uh, the original one. But, you know, you've got all these... Fre if you're growing any fresh herbs in your, in your gardens, this is a wonderful time to make pesto out of any of them. And r when I go home today, I'm going to make uh, some pesto out of mint. I've got so much mint, I don't know what to do with <laughs> it all. I'm going to make some pesto out, and I and I and I'll take it and I'll put it in plastic and I'll freeze it, and then it's good. Then for you six have months. all this wonderful seasoning all, actually all year long. Absolutely, if you freeze it. So I we recommend highly um, pesto. It, mm. uh, you know just. If you're having some pasta, throw some pesto in the pasta. Right. It's wonderful. Okay, so before we get on to our next, uh, Meryl, our next recipe, I want to talk about a movie that we went to called Chefs. This was a really good movie. It was a good movie. but And I, the reason why I want to mention it is it's a story about a guy uh, that was a, a renowned chef, got fired and uh, built his own... Now, fired basically because he didn't want to do what the owner said, right. which was the proverbial. Right. He wanted to, uh, you know, do his own thing and do something a little bit more interesting. So, if we look back, one of the past episodes when we were out in Portland, we went to downtown Portland, and there was this one place in downtown Portland that must have had 50 food trucks, and all of the people that owned these food trucks were people that were chefs in some very nice restaurants. They're finding to do a, sh a, a food truck is easier because they have a limited amount of time. They're there for a certain amount of time, and they don't have the whole overhead. They don't have to work late at night. Easier. Usually this food trucks are for lunch and possibly dinner, you know, until dark or something, but they don't usually go much further than that. Right. And uh, the other lovely part about this movie was that it got him to react and, and take his young son, he was divorced, and he took his son on the, uh, they took this truck from New York all the way to Vegas or something, I don't know, but they were on the road. So he took his son, who must have been about, uh, I would say, 11, and he took his son, and it was an activity that they both did and really truly enjoyed. So, and you know, these food trucks, uh, are are something that are blossoming here in, All the United, over. in the United States. But if you go to Europe, uh, they're there. They were always to, there. If you go to Asia, it, it takes different forms. They have little push carts. They have food trucks. They have little uh, well, boats. Uh, they all, it's the same idea. The food is good. It's inexpensive. Go to... One of the best ones I've had is in New York City. You know, you you see the hot dog cars right. going well, around. Right. Well, they were there. I mean, they were very limited in New York. I mean, they're doing much more now. But they're you doing always more. Uh, you always had the hot dog. You had the roasted chestnuts. There were always food trucks in the major area. It wasn't really food trucks, but there were food. Right. Now it's considered a food truck. They just take these and make really interesting kitchens out of them, and they serve excellent food. And if you go to New York sometime, and you'll see the, 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 the what's the name of those hot dogs, Maryland, starts with a Z, with the push carts. Doesn't make any difference. Right. You see there's a push cart, with, and they're Sweet, doing the Swigler. Whitler's or something. Yeah. Swigler. And they got hot dogs. They also have chicken on a stick on most of them that they sit right. in the back. They're wonderful. They're absolutely fantastic. So you might want to try them. So uh, that's our uh, that's our movie we're being movie critics now, right? Well, we go to the movies a lot, we so but that was a really fun movie. I enjoyed it. The next recipe I want to want to share with you all uh, is uh, the Sequestered Tavern, uh, which just opened recently. This is uh, where Bill's Run was in Seneca yeah. Falls. Uh, has they make a French onion soup that is outstanding? It is really, really good, and uh, I I'd like to give you this recipe. And you can cook it at home, or you can go on down there and try it. My buddies, I told them I was going to do this recipe, <laughs> and they and they said, "Well, what? what is, why is it French onion soup? Why couldn't it be a, some other kind? Why do they call it French onion soup?" I said, "Because it probably started in France." 
And they, they really didn't buy that. They, they said, oh, come on, Jimmy, you got to come up with a better explanation of why this is French onion soup. I'm sure if we looked it up in Google, we could find out why, but Jim's going to make his own story. So, <laughs> so I figured, okay, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you all this recipe with a French accent. There, I don't know if that'll work, but go ahead. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very easy recipe that we're going to do for the French onion soup. We're going to take some Valdelia onions, mm -hmm. and we're going to slice them nice and thin. We're going to put them in a little butter and oil, and get them uh, golden, and uh, and we're going to do that. Uh, and then we're going to add the secret ingredient, Jack Daniel's whiskey, one well, cup. Yes. And we're going to add to that some stock, and we're going to cook that some more for about 30 minutes until it all becomes very caramelized and, and brown and golden. And, uh, and, and we're going to take that and we're going to take some bread, some good Italian bread, and we're going to uh, grill it. Our French bread. Our French bread? <laughs> yeah, it's the French bread. You better take the French. Uh, what do they call a French bread? A baguette. Yes, yeah. they do. <clears throat> and you're going to put that on the bottom, okay? And then you're going to put the onion soup over the top. Then you're going to go down to Sauder's, and you're going to get slices of mozzarella. It's supposed to be that you should have uh, Gruyere, but we're not going to have Gruyere. We're going to mm. have mozzarella. We're going to put that <coughs> over the top. We're going to put it in a crock. We're going to put it in the oven, brown the top, and serve it. And it is a great, great. So it's really the caramelization and the whiskey and he uses a certain amount, uh, some different spices in it. Fresh or, or spices, the herbs. sage. Sage, and well, there was another one too. What was it? It was sage and thyme and rosemary yep, those is three. what he uses. So those are the fresh herbs. And this, this is a great uh, onion soup. Onion soups tends to be on occasion uh, salty. This is not salty. And uh, they, it, it comes there, out extremely well. There was a real complexity to the taste of this, and I thought it was very, very yeah. good. So you try the onion soup. It's <laughs> uh, very good for you, okay? Okay. <laughs> that was a terrible accent. Works. It works. <coughs> All right. Next thing <coughs> we're going to do is, from Joe Dog's Mafia, is Zabignone Cold. And what do you see? What is zamignoni? Zamignoni is a combination of marsala and egg, egg egg yolks that you put off in a double boiler. And sugar. And sugar. And uh, at this time of the year, what goes so well with this is fresh fruit, fresh strawberries in particular. So you're going to take the combination of the egg yolks and you're going to and uh, the sugar. And you're going to start to beat that over some some uh, water, and you, this is basically you're creating your own double boiler, okay? You can put, right. All right, and it'll start to fluff up. You're going to add the sugar to it and can continue to beat it, and and then you're going to add the marsala wine, and you're going to continue to beat it until it really fluffs up. Put it in the refrigerator, let it cool. Add, uh, get some uh, whipped cream. You can buy store-bought. You store can do bought your own whipped cream or you can do store-bought, sure. Fold that in and serve it with strawberries, and you've got a great dish. Now, if you don't want to go through the problem of, of, of mixing and beating this in a double boiler, another easy way that you can do what you can do is take some whipped cream and take some Grand Manier. And Grand Manier is nothing more than half brandy and half orange liqueur, and fold that into your your uh, your uh, whipped up uh, whipped cream, and then add your strawberries to it, and it has somewhat of the same flavor. Not as quite not as, as good. The Sauvignon is really really Zavignon good with, is, with is, the is, marsala. Is, is is wonderful. So you might want to want to want to try that. Summer's coming along. Strawberries are here. It's a that great. That can be used thing. with any kind of berry, but it's particularly good with strawberries. Yes, but absolutely. But you could use it with raspberries or blueberries or any kind of berry that comes into yeah. uh, season. The other thing I want to talk here, we mentioned it a little bit was crostini. Uh, when I did this uh, meal for for naps. Uh, the first course of that meal was crostini, and what you're doing is you're taking the bread and you're and you're grilling it or toasting it, rubbing it with 
with garlic and uh, and uh, olive, oil. olive oil, and then you make all these different things that people can. If you have some people over, that they can dip, uh, take some, and put it on top of this bread. And uh, in this, I'm going to give you one recipe. There's all kinds of recipes, and if you want more, let me know. I can get them for you. Uh, using some very simple things, uh, a simple thing of taking onions and sautéing some onions and uh, making it al garajochi, which is a combination of sweet and sour. Sweet being some uh, sugar and, and sour being some vinegar and letting that uh, cook down and then putting that o over it or letting your guests take that and put over it. You can do that with with uh, beans and and and, uh, and tomatoes. Uh, right. You can, and I'm not talking about green be uh, beans. You're talking you're about either, yeah, you're talking about a, a uh, cooked bean of some sort, <coughs> either. Or, or cauliflower or any, any anything Any of your like fresh that. vegetables, again, seasoning them with all these fresh herbs. Yeah, so they're all, uh, and it makes an easy appetizer if you're entertaining or uh, an easy uh, brunch for you and you're in the family. So uh, all those are, are the, what we're talking about in these recipes are things uh, to start this, well, the, the onion soup is it, but the rest, most of the things are start out the, the season of the summer with. So, uh, Marilyn, the next time, yes, uh, I think we'll stay was the summer and make some summer salads. How's that? That sounds good because summer salads are wonderful for dinner. Yeah, we can. Uh, in, in the summer and you don't have to be in front of the hot stove. They're very good. Again, you have all the fresh vegetables and all, you know, whatever. And we'll, we'll get into, uh, I got a great recipe for a shrimp louis. We'll talk about that. That comes out of San Francisco. Again, you can be using things like shrimp and 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 uh, you know in, in seafood. All right. Uh, that are very nice on salads. And uh, maybe a camponada, which is a, a a combination of eggplant and types of things, or maybe a tomato and bread salad. All of these are wonderful things uh, uh, that uh, we can be talking about ne the next time. Uh, upcoming in the next few weeks, we're going to have uh, the the person who owns the creamery. Are you familiar with the creamery? It Out on Route 89. It's absolutely incredible ice cream. They have great ice cream and the they best their around. Own. And we're going to have have them in. Uh, we're going to have uh, the people at the uh, the tea company come in and talk about their dim sum uh, that they yes, serve. Yes, if out any there. of you have not tried that, that's an excellent thing to do at the tea company. And there are two things you can do. You can have a tea tasting or you can go and have this wonderful dim sum that Mark makes and it's really good. It's very, very good. And I'm talking to the Cornell Extension of coming on in and talking about uh, all the farmers markets. They're 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 the ones that are, are are really involved in this thing. Right. And talking about the wonderful things that they have there. So we're, we're happy and we're excited about summer coming, and uh, we hope you are, and we hope you enjoy all the wonderful products, the local products that we have available here in the Finger Lakes, and the local places to eat and drink and be merry and be happy and that's what it's all about isn't it people we sure it is enjoy we'll see you next time bye bye, bye.